So I've changed this system into a matrix. Uh, and a lot of you guys noticed, and this is really good, that if I take row two, I should say row three, and add it to row two, that'll give me a new row two, which eliminates the X on that. Uh, but not only that, if we take, because we can do this, I'm going to do it separately, I apologize. So let's, I'm going to keep my bottom row the same, one, two, two, negative one. So if I take row three and add it to row two, I get a zero, three, zero, and negative 12. That's pretty convenient because we eliminated the Z in that equation as well. Now the top row you could keep the same and and put it in this matrix but if I change it, it it may take away some steps so what I mean by that is in this row I already have a coefficient of X that's one that's great because this coefficient is not one and I can eliminate it by taking negative four times row three and adding it to row one so I got negative four times the one plus the four is zero. That's great. Negative four times two plus this one, I get a negative seven, I think that's right. Negative four times this two is the same thing, negative seven. And this would be negative one times four. Negative four is four plus three is a positive seven. That's ah, pretty nifty. We got uh, all sevens there in the top row now. Um, and if I wanted to make this more formal, I could move these around, which I'm going to do just because. So I, I don't did know. like four. I did a positive. All right. So if I move these around, again, I, I, I only do this because I can. And my second row, I'm going to stay the same. I, actually, I'm going to work on that. Row two, I'm just going to divide it by three so we don't have to add a step on this. And, uh, well,. I guess we could take row one and divide it by negative seven. That would give me a bunch of ones. Do not that yep. That's the one I got. That's, uh, that's, that's the one, one I, I didn't. Know. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I'm also taking row one and moving it to the bottom. So it'll be row three now. So zero, one, one, and negative one. And we can see now that's going to be pretty easy to work with maybe so right here if I take if I want to work on my last row because I got a bunch of zeros I can take row 2 multiply that by negative 1 Won't that mess up? so negative 1 times row 2 if I add that to row 3 then I'll get a 0 right here which is what I want so what does that give me on uh, row 3 so 0 times negative 1 is 0, plus 0 is that 0, it's my row 3. Negative 1 times 1 plus this 1 is 0, that's good. Negative 1 times 0 is 0, plus this 1 is 1. Negative 1 times 4 is positive 4, plus this negative 1 is 3. So I've solved now for two values, 0, 1, 0, negative 4. And I can work on that top row again. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> all right, so if, I'm, if I take row 2 again, and I make that a negative 2, or multiply that by negative 2, and add it to row 1, then it will give me a 0 where that, that 2 is right there. You didn't have to do this, by the way, right? I mean, now that we know what the y and the z are. We could have just went back to the original equation here in black and solved for x. But uh, we're pretty committed to these matrices because we love them so much. So here we go. 1, uh, negative 2 times 1 plus this 2 is 0. Uh, 0 plus 2 is 2. This uh, negative 2 times negative 4 is 8 plus negative 1 is 7. And that gives me a new matrix. 
All right, well, if I continued with the matrix, what I need to do is eliminate this 2, which would be very easy with row 3. So if I take negative 2 times row 3, then I have the opposite coefficient of z, adding to row 1. Again, it's not going to affect these first two values, which is great. Uh, it will affect the answer, and that's okay. So I got 1, 0, 0. Negative 2 times 3 is 6. A negative 6, rather, plus the 7 is 1. And nothing else changed there. And this is great because it gives us our answers. Our x is 1. Our y is negative 4. And our z is 3.